So what do we have so far? We added some uh, new features about day, you know, holiday, weekend, weekday number, etc. And then we added some geographical ones. And now we come to the one where I came up with, which I'm very proud of, <laughs> is weather information. Because when you think about it, if it's raining, you're way more likely to take a cab than, I don't know, try to walk somewhere. Um, so I found this data online and let's uh, import it. It's basically uh, every three hours of every day, the temperature, the humidity, wind speed, cloud cover, and amount of precipitation. It is not exactly in the granularity that I want. Ideally, it will be hourly, but I'll show you how to deal with that also in a second. So the first look uh, I have at it, I realized that there are some missing values. And also, there, this one is not really a number, right? It looks probably it's, it's going to be a string because it has the percent uh, sign here. So um, I'm just going to look at the types, the default types that it has. Datetime is object, which is fine. I'll cast it into datetime uh, type soon. Temperature is float, looks correct. Humidity is integer, but this is probably like percent. Uh, wind speed is integer and then cloud cover is object so that probably means that it's a string so I want it in a numerical way because again as I said there is a relationship linear relationship between 70% and 50% so I want to have them as numbers and not as strings uh, amount of precipitation again there it is a string probably because you know there's such a thing as trace precipitation but let, let's look at how we're going to deal with those now so this is what it looks like i already looked at it so cloud cover i actually don't need this one i can delete this one yeah so cloud cover uh i think i showed you this before this shows me for every different value that we have in this specific column how many times these ones occur it's also a good way to see the different types of values that we have on a certain column. So we have 70 to 80, 80%, 100%, 20 to 30%, 50%, no clouds, sky obscured by fog and or other meteorological ph phenomena. Okay. Uh, amount of precipitation I also want to see. Okay, so this is kind of like a continuous thing. We start all the way from point zero. As far as I can see, yeah, that's the lowest one. And then, yeah, this is a, yeah, it probably has some sort of me metric with it. I don't, I don't really know what the, what the unit of it is. Um, I will probably say though, like trace precipitation, I would either write a zero or a 0 0.1 there, because obviously this means like there is some precipitation, but not a lot. But then again, you know, if, if I had an expert with me here, I would ask them, okay, what does trace precipitation mean? What does it mean? Is it less than 0.3? Is it more than that? Is it okay if I just write 0 0.1 here? But that does like really detailed work. I think it's fine if we don't even do that. So I think I'm just going to do like somewhere around 0.1 or 0 here. Uh, I also want to see if there are any missing values, and there are. Yeah, so cloud cover, so this one, no, sorry, this one has four missing values. That's not a lot. That's absolutely really fine. Uh, we'll deal with them. And amount of precipitation has more than 2,000 missing ones. So, I mean, when I look here, obviously, apparently it rains a lot. These ones mean probably that it rains a lot doesn't happen so often that it rains a lot so you know the higher you go basically the less often that it happens so I guess it's um with that logic I would think that then trace precipitation happens like the most often out of all of these and since this is like no rain this is probably zero you know because these are the missing values so there is a non value there so I mean it could also be that on that day uh, it was just um, the the sensor got broken so that's why we don't have the we didn't collect the data for it but yeah I, I mean 
My first intuition is to write zero for the missing values and 0.1 for the trace precipitation. But let me show you some other ways how you can deal with the missing value. So what, I, what I'm going to do, I'm first going to deal with amount of precipitation. What I do is basically I replace everywhere it says trace uh, precipitation. I'm going to change it with 0.1. And uh, yeah, and that way I will be able to cast this whole column to float so it doesn't have to be string anymore and after that so there are a couple of reasons how we how a couple of ways how we can feel the missing values so we have a lot of them how many points do we have in total i haven't looked at it so let me quickly check how many data points that we have here i just wanted to see yeah so we're missing a lot actually that's crazy yeah, but like, okay, Let, let's do our best to cover it. This is just some extra information we're adding, right? This is not crucial information. So if it helps, it helps. If it doesn't help, we'll see. Um, so the first option when you have missing values is, as I said, just use your intuition. And if you think it's zero and that's why it's none, just fill it with zero. Um, but I'm not going to do this because I feel like it's a little bit too many missing values for it to be zero. Another way of doing it would be to use a fill method. So you can either use forwards fill or backwards fill. Um, so basically one of them is like, if you're f f filling forward, it means that if you have a value for, let's say uh, 1st of January, 1 p.m. And if you don't have a value for 1st of January, 2 p.m., you use the value of 1 p.m. to fill the 2 p.m. one. So you're basically using the last occurred number to fill the uh, missing values after that until you again come to a value where it's not missing. Uh, you can do the backward fill instead, which will be like this. That would mean that you use the next value that's not missing. So again, if you're missing 2 p.m. and let's say that's the, the first one and then you're also missing 3 p.m but then you have a value for 4 p.m. So you use the 4 p.m. value for the 3 and 2 p.m. missing values. But I'm also not going to do this because it's very, um, I mean, there, I feel like there's a better way of doing it, which is the interpolation. So interpolate works as if you have one value before the missing value and you have another value after the missing value, you basically draw a, a linear line let's say, and, and, and basically like take the value that correspond to the missing one. So if it's at 1 p.m., if it's 10 degrees, let's say the weather, 10 degrees Celsius, and at 3 p.m., what did I say, wait, <laughs> if, it's, if it's at 1 p.m., 10 degrees Celsius, and then 2 p.m. is missing, and then 3 p.m. is 20 degrees Celsius, then you can say, okay, it means that uh, at 2 p.m. the weather was 15 degrees Celsius because, I mean, you know, it might have raised like this, it might have raised like this, but you're saying, you're just assuming that it was a straight line, how it um, in increased from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. So that's why you're giving 2 p.m. a um, the average value there. So that's how I'm going to fill these missing values. I think this is a okay way to do it in this um, data set. And um, that brings me to cloud cover. So what did I have there? Yeah, I have these strings. So first of all, I'm going to change these strings to uh, different uh, float values. So, you know, if it's like 70 to 80%, whatever, I'm going 70% and I'm going to make it float. Um, so I'm not writing like 70, I'm writing 0.7. Uh, same for 100%, 20%, 30%, 50%. If it's no clouds, I'm saying zero. If it's sky obscured by fog or other meteorological phenomena, that means that, you know, basically the whole sky is, uh, again, covered. So I'm thinking of it as just one. Because at the end of the day, I'm thinking of this as in, you know, how does it affect a person? So if it is, if, the, if there's a 100% cloud cover, then you probably feel like, oh, it's going to rain. I better take a cab instead of walking. I feel like a fog will, might also create the same feeling in a person, maybe a feeling of like less security. So you want to be in a cab rather than like walking on the street, the street where you can't really see 10 meter in front of you. That's 
what I think. People might think different things, but you know, that's how I um, perceive this. And yeah, that's the thing, you know, we have the freedom to do stuff like this and I think it's very fun. So uh, I just wanted to see, yeah, I mean, yeah, also I want to show you here, happens three times in the whole data set. So like, how wrong can I go there? You know, not very wrong. <laughs> um, yeah, again, we have four missing values here. I'm just gonna, again, interpolate them. I feel like that's the nicest thing to do in this um, data set. So I, oh, I didn't run this one. Uh, let's run these ones. So now we, if you remember, we had objects for these. Now I changed them and they're float. And the last thing I, if you remember that I wanted to do was to change this to date time. So I'm doing it and I'm again creating our month and day in this data. So why am I doing it? Because I want to merge it at the end when everything is ready back to my uh, data set that I have where I have the taxi transaction information. So yeah, let me, let me show you what I have here. So this is the, this is a totally separate data set that I read, you know, as I said, I downloaded this information from the internet and then this is what I had. Now I worked with it a little bit. I fixed the missing values. I fixed some uh, strings. I made them floats and stuff. So this is a whole different data set. And my actual data set is this guy. Where is this guy? This guy. Just show me the head. So this is what I had so far when I added the borrow information. If you remember, I added some uh, geographical information, some um, time information. And what I want to do is basically I want to uh, get this bit, temperature, humidity, wind speed, cloud cover, amount of precipitation. I want to get this and basically paste it at the end of what I have here. And how we do that is basically by merging. But how do we merge? So to merge, what I'm saying is um, merge this information for every month, day and hour that correspond. So that's why I had to create the hour, month and day here. So what the Python, uh, what Python is going to do is basically going to say, okay, hour 22 here, let me go find or maybe month 12 here. Let me go find my month 12, which we don't have. We have month uh, January only. <laughs> so I'll go find, it will go find all the January ones. And then it will say, okay, day 31st. It will go find all the ones that are day 31st. And then it will say, okay, hour 22nd. And then it will go all the ones that are hour 22nd. And at that point it's like, okay, now we're ready. And then it's going to copy this line and then paste it at the end of here. Um, so yeah, that's why I needed to create our month and day here too, so that I can merge it and, um, I'll do it now I'll show you what we have. Yeah. So again, what we have here is we have the borrow information. That's what we added last. And then we have, you know, it copies the whole thing, which is a bit annoying date time. Like, so I copied this whole thing here now with the corresponding ones. So that's why one of the first things that I want to do actually is to delete date, time, hour, month, and day from this data set because I don't want them. And after removing those, let me see what it looks like now. Okay. So yeah, we don't have the unnecessary information now that we had here, you know, date and time, we already know that we don't need it hour month day we don't need it so are we done we're not done <laughs> so as you see here we have a lot of missing values so that's because if you remember i told you in this data set we have um data per hour but the weather data set that we downloaded from the internet had data points per three hours so that's why where we will have some values which is which does not correspond to any hours in the weather data set so then it will be missing values here so let me see how many of them are missing quite a lot of them are missing in my data set so in the merged version so what i'm going to do here is basically uh, i did this already interpolate again so uh, I am just sorting 
to so as i said you know interpolation is basically you this is how the data goes you have data here you have data here this one is missing and then it looks at the value what this value is looks at what this value is and tries to draw a straight line and find the or guess the number that should be there or like the most logical number it should be there so that's why first i want to sort them per a day and hour to make sure that you know uh, they are sorted in the right order and then i will interpolate them but after i interpolate them the first ones will still be missing because, you know, as I said, for interpolation, we need to know two points where the middle is missing. Uh, but some of them are all the way at the beginning, so there is no before. So we cannot do interpolation for that. And that's why I'm going to use backward filling. So, you know, if the, let's say this is sorted, it's not, but let's say it is, then it will say, okay, this is the first value that we see. It will fill, fill these ones with 15.62. And. After that, we should not have any more missing values. And we don't, nice, let's look at it. Okay, this is sorted nicely. And yeah, as you can see, we don't have any missing values here either. It all looks good. So from now on, the next thing that we can, we're gonna do is basically the main thing that we came here for <laughs> the moment you've all been waiting for uh i'm excited about that because there's a lot to talk about in model training even though you know i told you that oh yeah it's just these two lines you write the random forest regressor or decision tree regressor and then and then you just fit it but actually it's not that easy there are some uh, things that we need to remember while we're doing that so yeah, well, let's dive deeper into it in the next lesson. But again, as I said, try to give it a shot yourself. Try to come up with some other algorithms that we can use. So we already did decision trees, but can you guess or can you find out what other models that we should use, what other algorithms that we should use? And if you're up for it, just go and try to implement them yourself and try to see what your performance is. And then I'll show you what I did and then we can compare it. And hopefully uh, I'll be able to show you some stuff that you didn't know before. So yeah, see you in the next video.